This is part two of a two-part series where we show you how to rebuild a CVT clutch. Be sure to watch part one to learn how to rebuild the primary clutch. All right, so now we're moving on to the secondary clutch. Now you'll notice if you look real closely here, there are lettering and X to be precise on the clutch so that we can line everything back up once we put it back together. So just to be extra careful, we're gonna take and mark and index the clutch so that when we put it back together, we can get it put to back together the way that it needs to be. All right, then we're gonna take our Torx T25 and we're gonna remove these four fasteners that are on the back side of the secondary clutch. All right, so now that we've got those four fasteners removed, we can pull the helix from the secondary clutch. Now you'll wanna give this a good inspection. You wanna check this bushing right here. You wanna check it for any excessive wear, galling, etc. If any of that is present, you'll definitely wanna replace the bushing. Now to further inspect the helix, you want to inspect these guides right here where the roller bushings on the, on the spider of the secondary clutch will ride. Now, you'll want to check and feel for excessively deep grooves. There is going to be some wear present, but unless it's extremely excessive, you don't have to worry about it. But if it's in real bad shape, definitely replace the helix. Now, as far as removing the spider in the secondary clutch, we need to place this into our clutch compression tool. Now, we do want to gain access, once it's in the tool, to the snap ring that retains the spider inside of the secondary clutch. So we'll get this mounted in there, pull the snap ring, and we'll pull out the spider's assembly along with the spring. All right, then we can take and remove the driven spider. The spider plate will come out of this with the spider dampener. Now on the driven spider, you want to inspect the roller bushings, again, for any flat spots, excessive wear, excessive play between the driven spider's body and the thrust washer. Now, these are in pretty good shape, but we're just gonna go ahead and replace them anyways. So we're gonna pull off the E-clip, pull off the thrust washer, and then replace the roller bushing. All right, now when installing the new roller bushings, there are two sides to it. We've got a flat side, and then we've got a, a side that's slightly recessed or that is concave. This concave side is going to face towards the body of the spider. Now that we've got our driven spider roller bushings replaced, we can set this aside, and then we need to pull out the driven clutch's spring and the spring retainer that it sits in. Then we can take our roll pin punch and we're going to drive out the two roll pins. All right, so once you get the roll pins driven out, then we can take our driven clutch, pull it out of the clutch compressor, and we need to remove the pins that the roller bushings sit on. So for that, we're just going to take a flathead screwdriver and just kind of work them out. All right, so now that we've got these pins removed, we need to inspect the roller bushings for excessive signs of wear. So here is a great example of excessive wear. We have a very large flat spot that is worn into the roller bushing, so this doesn't really work as it's designed to, and, and it needs to be replaced. So we're gonna throw this into the vise, we'll remove the old roller bushings and set them aside. On some of the newer razors, the driven clutch will have a square slider as opposed to the round one. Now the slider to sheave inspection service limit for this style of secondary clutch is 0.175 inches or 4.5 millimeters. The slider's width service limit is 0.975 inches or 24.8 millimeters. When this service limit number has been reached, you will want to replace this component. All right, so next we need to take a look at the driven clutch itself. So now that we've got those pins removed from the driven clutch, we can separate the two halves. Now we want to take our movable sheave and we want to inspect this inner bushing right here for any signs of excessive wear or galling. And we want to also inspect the shaft that it rides on as well. We want to inspect the shaft in the location where the bushing sits, we want to inspect for excessive wear, any divots or galling as well. If you have any of those signs of excessive wear, you'll definitely want to replace the entire assembly. Next, we want to take a look at the sheave faces themselves. Again, like we did on the primary, we want to surface the faces with some Scotch-Brite. And as you can see, these have a much darker coloration, so this lets us know that the sheave faces are glazed. So we'll spray them down with some contact cleaner, get everything cleaned up, and then we can service the faces of the sheaves. Next, we can begin servicing the other half of the sheave. All right, so now we can take the two halves of the sheaves and we can assemble them. Now we want to take and look at the yellow marks that we made earlier to index the clutch and we want to line those up as we place these two together. So we'll place the movable sheave onto the fixed sheave, just like that. So now that we've got that put together, we can take our 
roller pins. We're gonna clean these up with a little bit of Scotch-Brite and then we will install the new roller bushings. All right, so now we can take our sheave here, our secondary clutch, and we're gonna flip it over. Make sure that the yellow marks that we made earlier, your indexing marks are lining up with each other. And then we need to align the movable sheave with the fixed sheave so we can see this hole right here. And that's gonna be what's receiving the pin and the roller bushing. So once we've got it set like that, we can take our pins, place the roller bushing onto them with the flat side facing to the outside of the pin. Now something to note about these pins is on one side of the flange part of it, we've got a flat side. So this flat side is going to be facing towards the engine when the sheave is installed on the machine. So when we insert these into the sheave here, we want to make sure that the flat side is facing towards the two halves. So once we've got that side in, we can do the same thing for the other side. All right, so once we've got those set, we can take our roll pin tool and we're gonna insert it without the roll pin into the diameter here, just to make sure that we are lined up with these pins that carry the roller bushings. If they're not lined up, you can take one of your tools, move it around a little bit so that you can drive the roll pin without it getting messed up. All right, so once we've got the alignment holes aligned, we can take our roll pins, we're gonna drive them back through and set them to where they are sitting flush with where it inserts. All right, so now we can take the spring seat or spring cup, and we're gonna place it inside of there. Then we can take our spring and install it. And now for the, the spider plate, spider bushing, and the spider itself, when these go together, you may need, some, need to make some final adjustments so that we can get the helix to mate up with our marks. All right, now when it comes to installing the spider and its assembly, there's a skip tooth on the fixed sheaves shaft. Now what that is, is basically a gap in the splines that will only mate with its corresponding component that it too has a gap in the splines. So you need to look for where this gap is in the teeth and find out where it's at on your shaft. Now, when we couple these two together, you may need to take them apart and reset it to find the right orientation. Because once this is set onto the skip tooth and it's splined on there, we've got our snap ring in place. We need to line up the marks on our helix with the movable sheave. So we need to make sure that the wheel rollers are in the right location so that when we go to set this on and bolt it down, that our indexing marks line up. All right, so I've inserted this, the spider plate and bushing into the spider and I'm gonna set it on here. Now I'm looking down the shaft, I can see where the skip tooth is. I'm gonna find the skip tooth on the spider plate. I'm gonna get them eyeballed up pretty good. All right, so that's where it's going to set once we install the snap ring. Now to make sure that our indexing lines are mated, I'm going to take my, my helix here. I've got my indexing mark. My indexing mark on the movable sheave is located in this area. I'm gonna take and place this onto my rollers. Now I want the openings in the spider to be able to, to sit right with the roller bushings so that once this is all pressed down and together, everything is gonna line back up and our clutch will remain balanced. So now at this point, we're gonna place it into the clutch compressor. We'll compress the spider. Once it's seated properly and is aligned with the skip tooth, we can then take our snap ring and snap pliers and set it onto the shaft. Then we can pull it out of the clutch compressor. All right, so once you've got the snap ring set into place, you definitely want to give it a good inspection before releasing the clutch compressor assembly. So just make sure that it's seated into its groove and it's going to be safe. All right, looks like we're in good shape. So now we can pull this out of the clutch compressor. We're gonna take our helix here. We're gonna place it so that these notches, this opening right here, is going to line up with the rollers that are on the spider. All right, so we can take and place this onto the assembly. And then we wanna line up where the fasteners are gonna insert through the back side of the helix plate. So as you can see here, we're lined up with our index marks. So that lets us know that we have properly installed the spider onto the fixed sheaves shaft. Now, if yours is not lining up, let's say that your helix is, is 90 degrees off, you'll need to place the clutch back into the compressor, remove the snap ring, pull the spider out, and you'll have to make some adjustments on where the spider plate sits inside of the spider. Once you get it all lined up, it should mate back together just like this. All right, so now that we've got our helix installed properly onto our driven clutch, we can now insert the four fasteners and torque them to 48 inch pounds or four foot pounds. 
Okay, and that's how we rebuild the clutches. So now that we're finished up here at the bench, we can take these over to the machine and get them installed. All right, so we're over here at the machine. We're going to install the secondary clutch. Now, when we place this on here, we'll insert the bolt. Now, something to note real quick is there are splines on that shaft, so you definitely want to make sure that the driven clutch is seated properly. So you may have to mess with it for just a little bit. Once you get it seated, insert the bolt and again torque it to 55 foot-pounds. All right, now when it comes to torquing down the secondary clutch, it may be, well, it is difficult. You might have to have someone come help you so that they can hold onto the sheave plates, keep them in a fixed position while you finish applying the 55 foot-pounds of torque. All right, so now that we've got that installed on the driven clutch, we can move on to the primary. Now, before we install the primary clutch, we're going to want to clean off the output shaft from our crank. So we'll take some contact cleaner, we'll spray this down, we'll wipe it clean. We want this to be spotless. Same thing with the side of the primary that will be mating with the crankshaft. We want to make sure that those surfaces are clean. Next, we can take the primary bolt we can slide it into the clutch, thread it into place, and we're going to torque this to 96 foot-pounds. Now we can take our drive belt and install it on the clutch sheaves. We're going to depress our secondary clutch here. We'll start our belt on the primary and get it started on our secondary. We can remove our tool. Then we can can begin to walk the belt around the secondary sheath. And we're going to rotate it about five to seven times. Get the belt nice and taut. Now we can put the cover on. All right, next we can install the intake boot. And that's it. That's how you rebuild the CVT clutch on a Polaris. Now, if you have any questions or concerns as to what we've done here today, feel free to leave a comment below and we'll be sure to get an answer back to you. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more product spotlights, tests, and how-tos. And be sure to see our website at RockyMountainATVMC.com where you can find all the parts that we use today and much, much more for your UTV, ATV, and motorcycle. All right, guys, that's it for me. I'm Dustin with Rocky Mountain ATVMC. Thanks for watching and keep turning those wrenches. Thank you.